Hey you guys and welcome to the Star Star Steel Wars Hyper Chat. Can't say the other word. We are definitely not that. Welcome. I'm Steel Saunders. I do love Star Wars. And it is Tuesday, the 10th of November 2020. Hey to everyone in the chat. There's already some good discussion going on in the hyper chat on YouTube about what we'll be talking about today uh, at the top of the show. And that is, is that Tashin, the uh, amazing book publisher that um, did, what did they call that book? The Star Wars Archives. Yes, Star Wars Archives. Um, they are, I think it's just coming out now, the prequels version, Star Wars Archives, 1999 to 2005, featuring a George Lucas interview that uh, mentions that uh, part of his plans were to include Darth Maul. So we have got a uh, an article up here on Polygon that uh, has got a few uh, early tidbits that we'll go through. And um, we've also got a page of uh, the interview uh, that was done with George Lucas for this actual book hey to everyone in the chat uh a bunch of crew sam carey's here we might um talk about sam carey has been uh doing a bit of hyper chat comedy on twitter so we might review that a bit later um and uh hey to everyone that's given us a shout out and and mary reed did say didn't hear the click that time at the start of the show um i did the thing you have to i have to mute myself to do the click you probably don't hear this if you listen to the podcast because i edited it out but there's this click at the start it don't worry anyway who cares you, you're throwing me off mary you're throwing me off and uh matthew mole gives a spoiler for the segment at the end of the show it's bingo time so uh, we will be talking some bingo, but uh, that is very <sighs> cryptic. Let's go. Polygon.com, Darth Maul sequel role, and nine other Star Wars tidbits from Tashin's new prequel book. Lucas looks back at his final Star Wars movies and the sequels that might have been. So uh, we'll, we'll tuck into this article and then we'll, we'll go off to discuss um, the main thing about Darth Maul and then a, uh, a few other things that um, get brought up. When George Lucas sold Lucasfilm to Disney in 2012, any hopes of seeing how he might have finished the saga went out of the airlock? Well, not really. Um, they, they could have done exactly what he wanted. We've since heard snippets of what he apparently would have, have done but nothing substantial. However, a new book from Deluxe Publishers, Tashin, has lifted more of the lead on what George would have done with episodes 7, 8, and 9. Uh, as the title suggests, Star Wars Archives 99 to 2005 is a companion to the Star Wars Archives 1977 to 1983 edition, covers the making of Lucas's infamous prequel trilogy at around 600 pages. Oh, that sounds sweet. The book explores every major detail of the three films cut you'd want it to, designed to tell the story of Anakin Skywalker and his eventual transformation to Darth Vader arriving December 13 in the States. But out now in the UK. Fair enough. There's a Tashin store just down the street from here. So um, is it in yet? Is it in yet? I don't have. Yeah, I don't think a deluxe 600 page book is in my uh future right now but oh my god i love those thick books um and he also finds room to discuss the special editions the huge technological leaps lucas made to get the films made digitally and his eventual plans for the sequel trilogy all straight from the torn torn's mouth star wars reference <sighs> So, Darth Maul was supposed to return for the sequel trilogy. Um, we already know from various parts of the galaxy that far 
far, far away that being cut in half wasn't enough to stop Darth Maul, but apparently the Sith fighter would have been the main heavy of Lucas's sequel trilogy with the aid of mechanical legs. Joining him in theory was Sith Lord Darth Talon from the Dark Horse comic book Star Wars Legacy. Uh, Lucas says Maul eventually becomes the godfather of crime in the universe because as the Empire falls, he takes over and that Talon was the Vader of the trilogy. And then it editorializes. Now we know where Solo got the idea. I don't think that's true. Um, from what they told us about Solo, it was a, uh, a bit of a Russian roulette. Of that, it was just like insert major character here. So, yeah, I don't think um, it was that. Now, there was a a post up on Reddit, which is a is a website I have never visited, not through a link, a, a link sort of thing. I, the whole platform terrifies me. Just being able to listen or read anyone's post is ugh. Uh, and someone posted um, a screenshot of this part of the interview in the book. It's since been deleted, but StarWarsNews.net have it up on their side, which is sweet. And if you are on the, if you're watching it, whether it's on YouTube, Facebook, or uh, Twitter, you can see it up on the screen, and this is how it goes. Darth Maul trained a girl, Darth Talon, who was in the comic books as his apprentice. She was the new Darth Vader, and most of the action was with her. So these were the two main villains of the trilogy. Maul eventually becomes the godfather of crime in the universe because, as the Empire falls, he takes over. I'll read the whole... No, let's just talk about the, the Darth Maul thing first and uh phil stozak getting into it uh he posted up today some darth callan talent sorry concept art and storyboards by emma keg uh from january and february 2013 as seen abram books art of the force awakens now there's an interesting little um where is this um someone commented is it phil i like a phil flex he's so polite these aren't from 2013. They are older concept panels from The Phantom Menace. Phil Stozak says, incorrect. These are from Ian McCaig's and my time working on The Force Awakens in 2013. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so the concept art has Darth Talon, who is... A whatever a Darth Maul is. She's a no, no, no. She's a Twi'lek. She's a Twi'lek with Darth Maul tattoos, which is just the most '90s Star Wars character or like comic book Star Wars character ever. And there's some evil multi-eyed thing caressing her. So there's that. Um, then there is uh, a bit of concept art of Maul and Talon, it looks like, some black and white pencil work. Then, very sexy photo, or photo, not a photo, concept art of Darth Talon in bed with um, a man, which Stuart Logston, who's uh, a good guy on Twitter, is speculating that is a son of Solo with her. So that could be cool. And then there's another very um, sexy looking um, picture of. Oh, I would say that's not da that was not Han Solo's son because it looks like Darth Talon has just lightsabered the. Um, the man that she just slept with or was about to sleep with. The embrace. The embrace. It's Star Wars. I'm not, I'm not sure how um, into it they they could have got. They could have got. Um, Paul Ponte says, that's a bit much for Star Wars. Ha ha. Exactly. Um, so, yeah, I, I've been thinking about it and 
I, I, I kind of quiver whenever anything George Lucas, oh, this is what I would have done, comes out because people go crazy for it and, and, and just review the idea on paper of, because like, it's all in the execution. Um, you know, people are very excited for the story of the prequels on paper, but when they saw the execution, they, you know, some people didn't like it. So you can't really get into this would have been better, this wouldn't have been better. And on paper doesn't mean it would have been good or not. On paper, I would take the idea of a continuing Darth Maul story and also becoming like the leader of the, the, the underworld over Palpatine coming back. Maul was already back. He was back in the Clone Wars. He, he was in play. So that's one less person coming back from the dead. Big plus, big plus there. And I like the idea of, like, like the villains in the sequel trilogy were, you know, just the, the very similar to the Empire. Very, very similar to the Empire in both look, um, their ships. So I like the idea that that trilogy would have a, a force-wielding leader of the underworld. And then, like, when, when you mention a word like Godfather, <sighs> That sounds good. That does sound good. Um, how this fits in to, you know, his talk of, I, th I, th I think it might hit it in a little bit of, you know, going into the, the wills and, and, and more into microscopic beings that are um, directing things happening in the Star Wars saga. You know, maybe you would have hated that and um, but liked this part of it. I don't know. I, I can't virtually decide what films that weren't even made, if if we would have liked them or not. But very compelling. And on paper, like, you know, if 2014, if someone said, hey, what do you want? Should we go with this? And in the last film, Palpatine comes back? Or, you know, Darth Maul is um, leading the underworld? I take more in the underworld for sure. Um, I'll continue checking out this page on um, StarWarsNews.net. The movies are about Leia. This is from George. I mean, who else is going to be the leader? Is trying to build the Republic. They still have the apparatus of the Republic, but they have to get it under control from the gangsters. That was the main story. Yeah. I am leaning more this way the more I read it. <laughs> um, but, you know, then, like, I love Ray. I, I do not want Ray to leave me in any way. It starts out a few years after Return of the Jedi, and we establish pretty quickly that there's this underworld and they're these offshoot stormtroopers who have started their own planets and that luke is trying to restart the jedi he put the word out so of a hundred thousand jedi maybe 50 or a hundred are left sorry something just popped up in my headphones um Dun, 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 dun. The Jedi have to grow again from scratch, so Luke has to find two and three year olds and train them. I, oh, I always hate the the Jedi getting kids too young. I, I just, especially when or Luke going back to that, like, like maybe the the message is that you know the Jedi got them too young and were too demanding. Um, you know, they would have had more empathy and, and, and handled things better if they had more relations with their parents and their families. And I, 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 I 
would hope that Luke would see the error, the folly of that, and maybe do things a bit differently. But again, this is all on paper. Um, Luke has to find two and three-year-olds and train them. It'll be 20 years before you have a new generation of Jedi. By the end of the trilogy, Luke would have rebuilt much of the Jedi and we would have the renewal of the New Republic with Leia, Senator Organa becoming the Supreme Chancellor in charge of everything. So she ended up being the chosen one. Hmm. Yeah, I uh I don't that end quote is um quite like Anakin is the chosen one. He he's George has said it. I'm very conflicted about this. So um yeah, that is a fascinating alternate timeline. Hmm. I wonder if the Polygon article handles the like the microbes. All right. So there's some stuff about this um, on Polygon.com. Hardcore fans will know that Lucas originally meant for the saga to be a tale from a fictional Bible known as Journey of the Wills, but we never got an explanation of the wills in the film. Lucas says originally he would have explained more about them in the prequels, but decided not to after the poor reception over the midi-chlorians law. Simply put, wills are microscopic single, microscopic single cell life forms that have a symbiotic relationship with the midi chlorins. See, this is oof, who feed on the force. So the wills are down with the midi chlorians who feed on the force, who are inside Jedi. There's too many little things in this. They gave the command to the midi chlorians to make Anakin, with Lucas stating he was touched by God, who in this case happened to be one celled animals. Um, and then this is just some more stuff uh, from the actual book, which we'll, we'll talk about in a sec. But um, I saw someone in the chat. Sam Carey says, I don't like the idea that there were 50 to 100 Jedi around in the original trilogy. Neither do I. It, it could have been that he found 50 to 100 Force users. And, you know, again, all this stuff is, is such broad strokes. So, you know, it, it, it could be weeded out or he, he could just be saying stuff as he goes. Uh, Mary Reed says the stuff about Leah as Supreme Chancellor sounds interesting, but I would not have liked Leah as the Chosen One. And then I think these what's that I'm getting now in the chat are um, about the Midichlorian business. It's very interesting. It's, it's very compelling. So um, let's go into a few other things that come up in this polygon. Um, the truth about Anakin's father. In the original script for Revenge of the Jedi, someone else was in charge of creating the senior Skywalker. Darth Sidious himself was originally to be the one behind the Immaculate Conception, telling Anakin, I have waited all these years for you to fulfill your destiny, and that he used the power of the Force to will the midichlorians to start the cell division that created him, even though most people had already assumed this to be the case. It's not hugely surprising it didn't make it in. I think that is very surprising. It didn't make it in. Like, it was a pretty strong theory, but I would have thought that would be a good sort of reveal payoff at the end of Revenge of the Sith or towards the end of Revenge of the Sith for um, Darth Sidious to reveal that he was the father. In this canon, I hate it. Because of who Ray's related to and who he kissed, who she kissed, um, it all gets a little bit um, original trilogy <laughs> for my taste with Luke and Leia. So, oh my God, I've, I've got to get things so... 
if I see this is this is just a, a house of cards of things that I uh, don't like. If Ray wasn't re- related to Palpatine, I love the idea that Palpatine created Anakin. But yeah. And Flash says, I actually don't mind the midi Chlorians. I don't mind them either. I, 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 I do think that they were delivered poorly. Um, Sam Carey is about to get banned in the chat saying, I would be down with this trilogy if Maul got to wield a helicopter saber. And Lydra rightly says, lol, oh, no. Um, this is a funny uh, tidbit. You're going to destroy the franchise. When Lucas initially told 20th Century Fox that he was making the story of how Anakin became Darth Vader, they were as excited as anyone else. Then he told them that in the first film, Anakin would be 10 years old. You're going to destroy the franchise. You're going to destroy everything. Lucas explains that he told people at Lucasfilm he was making a film that nobody wants to see, but would rather do that than telling the same story over and over. And to be fair, George, to George, it still made billions of dollars. I'm with 20th Century Fox. (laughs) Make Anakin like 16 or something. Um, uh, Homie Dam is saying Palpatine didn't create Anakin. We've, We've established that. I'm talking about what I would prefer. So... I'm just saying what I prefer. This every all those other YouTube accounts, they just go off. They they they're, they're running stories on theories, being news. Well, not all of them, but the ones that pop up in my feed. Got to tell you, um, Greedo shot first, of course. Since 1997, people have rallied against the change in a New Hope, where hapless bounty hunter Greedo shoots Han Solo at point blank range and misses. But Lucas sticks to his blaster and says in the book that this was always the case. Remember being annoyed about Hound Shoots First? God, it, it, this has just already triggered my um, 90s nerd rage. I never designed a hand to be a ruthless killer, he says. All the good guys shoot in self-defense. I think Han was shooting in self-defense in the original one because he knew what was about to happen. Um, on homies, good to know that they've got a... Uh, a sense of humor about it. There's a ha ha. Um, oh, Dan Grievous says Marvel Comics have hinted at Sidious creating Anakin. They have, but Matt Martin pointed out that that was a dream and not actually what happened. So I don't know. Oh, Marvel fan is chiming in with this. They went back on that and later confirmed that wasn't what happened. Yeah. So I kind of think think that perhaps in the comic it was to imply it happened and now they're saying it's a dream because has someone oh Dan Grievous actually (laughs) commented in the chat ew no more incest I'm with you I'm with you um All the guys shooting self-defense. When I edited the scene in 1977, you couldn't tell who does what. You could. You could, George. But it just... George didn't understand that what we saw, we loved. All the things that he didn't get right, we thought was sick. <sighs> um, I like it about him, but it frustrates me. He goes on to say that people that are upset wanted Han to be a murderer and that the point was to establish moral parameters so kids didn't copy people who conduct themselves in unbecoming ways. I think like Solo tells a great story of what forced Han to be where he was in, um, and the decisions he had to make to survive in Solo when we uh, catch up with him in Tatooine. And then at the end, he has the full face turn and comes back. You're all clear, kid. Let's blow this thing and go home. <laughs> what a great moment. Oh, oh. 
it's actually um, reenacted in uh, Harry's bedroom. I've got a giant inflatable, I've got to take a photo of it and show you guys, giant inflatable beach ball of the Death Star hanging and then we've got some Kenner uh, vehicles reenacting the uh, Death Star trench. There's Han Solo, two TIE fighters, Darth Vader's TIE fighter, X-Wing. It's, it's, um, it's a good vibe. It's a good vibe in there because, God, I hope Harry likes that scene when he's older. Please, please. He loves Baby Yoda. Maybe if someone can edit Baby Yoda into the cockpit in one of those ships, then uh, he'll be all over it. Um, Darth Vader, Taxi Driver. Tashin's book contains enough concept art to fill an ad at. Star Wars reference from the film. That we saw. It's a reference from it. Adats, they're a thing in the. Don't worry. <sighs> With one of the most intriguing images being an idea for how Anakin would have looked in Revenge of the Sith, concept illustrator Ian McKay drew an image of Hayden Christensen in a look that wouldn't be out of place in a Mad Max movie with his sleeveless Jedi tunic ripped open to the chest. Anakin's hair is even more extreme, being shaved aside from a thin mohawk. A la Travis Bickle in Martin Scorsese's Taxi Driver with it finishing in a braided ponytail. Ugh. Don't like that at all. But that was... That must have been what this concept art is that Phil posted. So that is Anakin Skywalker. That is... No buys on that. Not into it at all. Um, I, it actually looks like Shizor because it's not in colour. But um, um, there's a comment about this. Jo Joel Davis is asking about um, I love the idea of the prominence of Leia in the Lucas version, but fear what would have happened if Carrie still passed away. Well, that's just the butterfly effect. Who knows what happens to anyone? Um, also, the films probably would have been made sooner if uh, George was going to do it. But you can't – I don't – it's fair question, but um, that's just – I don't know. It, it's sort of uh, whatevs. This caption says, a stupid Han Solo idea. Han Solo finally got, oh, I think I know what this one is. Han Solo finally got his prequel story with 2018 Solo Star Wars story, but the character was originally going to be introduced in Revenge of the Sith where he'd be living on Kashak with the Wookiees. <laughs> that would have been brutal. Um, again, on paper, but we'd, we'd Muppet babied like Darth Vader, Boba Fett. We, we don't need to Muppet baby um, Han Solo as well. Uh, Lucas originally had the idea for him to be orphaned on the planet during the writing of Empire Strikes Back, but in, episode, in the episode three script, the youngster ended up helping Yoda, which Lucas eventually rejected. That is stupid, he said, admitting he was being too clever for his own good. George. Good call. Um, the edit doctor. Oh, my God. The phantom editor is in the chat. I haven't got a, a, a song for that yet. Um, and he rightly points out Anakin kills all the Tuscans and then the Padres. I don't know what that means. Well, dates are, and then, oh, sorry, Padme. Sorry. Anakin kills all the Tuscan Raiders and then Padme dates him after he tells her this. That is a way worse of a message than Han shooting for his safety. Can't argue. Can't argue. And that's, you know, quite often when people bring up, you know, Ray and Ben Solo, um, Kylo Ren, and, like, their relationship being um, toxic. It's like, 
Padme and Anakin, come on. Like if we're gonna if we're gonna look at Star Wars with that lens, then it um it flares up all over the place. Uh, what else have we got? Darth Vader uses lifts while Hayden Christensen is tall. He isn't Darth Vader tall. So when the time came for him to wear the iconic outfit of the Dark Lord, he needed a little help in the form of shoe lifts. He's a regular Chris Jericho. However, the actor felt like he required some practice as he felt rigid and he didn't feel like I was walking like Darth Vader. We knew from the original trilogy, but that was just what Lucas wanted with Anakin's Frankenstein monster style lumbering perfectly communicating the awkwardness of being essentially turned into a robot with a brand new set of arms and legs. That makes a good point. It does look bizarre the way he does it, but when you think about it, it does, um, it does connect corrupt corporations. Lucas acknowledges that people were upset with the prequels that the prequels open with a trade blockade and dispute, but nevertheless says that's how wars start. He goes on to say that the Phantom Menace starts with corrupt corporations doing bad things in secret and that all corporations care about is making money while everyone else is trying to do the right thing but being completely overwhelmed. The two main themes are about becoming a bad person and democracy being given away. There's no coup. There's no rebellion. There's no nothing. They voted in, which is what happens in real life. So, excellent story from uh, Polygon.com and the Star Wars Archives, 1999 to 2005, is available with 25% off at Amazon.com for 151 American dollars. I can't wait to just look through the demo copy at Tashin. Oh, COVID, damn it. <laughs> damn you, virus. I don't get to read books. I loved, that's one of the things I miss. Just, I used to love going into Barnes and Noble down the street and just flicking through books and magazines. <sighs> the little things, the little things. Um, I actually missed it so much that during the, 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 or it's, I don't know what we are in now, this soft lockdown. Um, but during the heavy lockdown, I um, ended up subscribing to Thrasher magazine because I just missed magazines so much. So um, they got some cash out of it. It was good. Now I look forward to it coming every month. Josh Caldra is shocked. What? Politics in Star Wars? Ridiculous. Ha, ha, ha. Um, Robbo. Robbo, always with the stinging comments from uh, our, our beloved Robbo report on the uh, Steel Wars Patreon. Great. I, I don't want to plug that, but I feel like he'd be upset if I didn't mention it. I don't understand how Uncle George could go on and on about how he would do something new if his plan was always to add two more Darths. Well, it was just one more Darth because Darth Maul was already established. Um, I, I love the idea of, of a rebranded Darth Maul. I just... Any, yeah, just the Godfather is so good that even I don't care how it's, if, it, if you're just like, oh, we're trying to be like the Godfather. <laughs> Isn't it actually a re-edit? Isn't it coming to HBO Max this month? Godfather 3? Francis Ford Coppola has gone back and, and done an, an edit and I don't know. I'm very excited about that because that is the weakest one of um, the trilogy by far. So, um I uh, look forward to uh, catching out the re-edit of that. I, I like the I like the basic story of it, but again, the incest in it, the incest lets it down. What is with these zoetrope types up in SF? Hmm. Um, let's just do a, um, a sweet plug. You know how much I love doing plugs. I hate, I, I, I literally hate doing them, 
but um, got to pay the bills. And if you're enjoying all the uh, content that we're putting out, please consider joining the Steel Wars Patreon. We've got some new offers going on, which I um, I feel like they're fair deals, you guys. For uh, three bucks a month on your podcast RSS, you will get every bit of content in audio as well as video versions of Patreon exclusive shows. We've uh, got a new Star Wars Year by podcast that is already recorded and that will be a Patreon exclusive in audio and video, possibly premiering this Sunday. So um, three bucks a month, uh, five bucks a month in the first month gets you all that as well as a sticker pack with Steel Wars stickers that I'm holding up to the, the screen. We've got Yodi Hall. They're all, all the graphics that you've seen. Snoke Theory Sucks, Yub Nub. Um, they are all in there. Or for $10 for the first month, you get a choice of T-shirt from merchostore.com and a sticker pack. First month, 10 bucks. Bang. T-shirt. Um, so please check that out. And Sam... Matthew Moll says, how do you claim your stickers? I will be sending out a uh, a Patreon or an email message um, in this week. This week. So I've got to do a lot of mailing um, stuff. Dan Grievous says, well, Disney did kind of fulfill Lucas's plan for Maul being a godfather of crime. I know. Um, and this." You know, there's so much real world um, things that might stop it from happening with um, with actors and such. But I would love for um, that Darth Maul story, the Solo story, to continue on Disney Plus. I, I just want ongoing stories, please, please. Um, All right, there's some. I like the um, the happy debate going on in the chat. You guys, are, you guys are good. You guys are good. Um, Home says, unfortunately, the movie <clears throat> where Maul is shown to be a godfather of space crime didn't make a billion dollars. Yep, but um, hopefully they can they can follow up on it one day. Um, because you know Disney Plus is a different um, cons like it's a different platform. I guess I, I like you know it's a different content delivery. So it um, I, I feel like it would work. I feel like it would work on that platform. But if you want it to happen. Keep watching Solo. Just keep, just just every day before you go to work, open up Disney Plus, press play on Solo, go out and um, live your life. And uh, it'd be like each day you are voting directly to Bobby I that you want the Solo story to continue. Now, let's go to this. This is very amusing. Sam Carey has posted up a bingo special edition See so, you know, those bingo cards people make trying to be funny on the internet? Sam Carey has done one for our humble show, which um, is a cool thing. Like throughout doing the, the podcast and, and live shows and stuff, we don't get to do the live shows anymore um, because of what's up. I've, I've gotten to meet so many like like cool listeners and fellow fans and stuff, and I, I, I love – with the live chat thing here on uh, YouTube, I've, I've gotten to know a whole like new group and, and there's some, you know, some classics in there. Of course, um, you know, Robbo, Dan Grievous, Josh Chapman, old school Steel Wars listeners. But then there's like one Marvel fan. I never heard from one Marvel fan before YouTube. So um, probably because he's, he's got an actual real name. So I'm not sure if he's um, new to Steel Wars or not. But it's been great to um, sort of joke along with everyone 
every week. Homey says, you hear that, Bobby I? That's the sound of solo streaming. That's the spirit. All right, let's get to this um, Star Wars bingo. So if, you, if you're just listening on the podcast, um, <laughs> Sean Hoffman says, I'm his favorite in case anyone was wondering. I was wondering, so I'm glad. Catherine Neen's my favorite. Come on, chill out, everyone. Um, Steel Wars bingo. So these are the things that apparently always happen on this show. Imperial Senate pod in the chat. Well, I don't think we've got that today. No Charlie in the chat. Uh, Sings Toro Watch. Didn't do that one today. The last time I heard Toro Watch sung on a podcast, it was on Kessel Run Radio. No, Kessel Run Transmissions. One of those bloody things, Corey and Noah. Geez, sorry, I I, 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 I don't mean to mess up the show. I, I, I like to name a show. I, I you know, I, I don't want to give him a vibe check. Okay. What's a vibe check? That is a major vibe check. I'm majorly checked right now. Sorry, dudes. Sorry about the uh, the vibe check. Um, Emily Lind in the chat. Well, I'm not seeing her there today. I'm not seeing her today. Uh, plays clip of Noah. Well, okay. Check that one off. Just did it. Plays clip of Toro. The show is young. The show is young. Says Yoju, if you will. Have not said it today. Oh, but I will. I will. Baby Yoda, Yoju, if you will. There's a lot of um, controversy about the consumption of the eggs. And how you want to take it is how you want to take it. However, if someone says that they found it triggering because they've had trouble conceiving a baby and and and, and bring a, a child to term without having a miscarriage and then you tell them it's it's all just made up like piss off piss off thankfully we had a a, a blissful um you know birth of Harrison, but uh, uh, like a shockingly surprising large number of, of people don't like get to um, say the same. And I, I, I just couldn't think of anything more traumatic than, than that happening. So just, oh, anyway, so um, there's that. Why is Sings Toro Watch on here twice? I don't know what's going on. Toro pick on screen. Um, that is, has not happened. Uh, Noah Van Outlaw in the chat. Haven't seen him today. Uh, Corey wears a beanie. Well, I, I'm seeing him on Twitter and he's, he's wearing a Mandalorian helmet at the moment. Um, Wait there, I, I've got to find this video is so funny. Oh, uh, I almost wrote Noah Van Outlaw. Here we go. Stop sharing. Give me two secs. So you got it with some sound. This is what's going on in Noah and Corey's house right now. For those listening, it's it's Noah picking up uh, Corey's Mandalorian and helmet. What? What? How? You took it off. What's wrong with you? Put it on. <laughs> what? That is not the way. That is not not the way at all. Um.
Oh, okay. So Rinkin 1978 says, this is just about the um, the egg thing. Too many people taking this too seriously. No. If something reminds you that you lost a child, that's like, come on. Come on. I mean, Jawas ate a mudhorn egg and no one says a thing. A mud, like, it's it's like the frog lady is a sentient being. She, like, programmed a droid to talk. Like, a, a mudhorn is, is, is a wild animal. Um, come on. Come on. And, and if you don't, if, like, if it's not triggering to you, you've not had that experience, that's fine. But you have to have empathy for those that have gone through this tragic stuff. And, like... Like it would affect them in ways that you can't imagine. So take their word for it because you've been lucky enough to not go through it. Anyway, we're having these <laughs> trying to do this. Um, that's just the way it goes. You know, I, I, I think of something that's upsetting me and I, yeah, but we, we, we're trying to go through this humorous Star Wars bingo, Steel Wars bingo. Um, plugs. We had plugs, regrettably, regrettably. You know, but we didn't have. You know, we didn't have that many plugs. We just had one for the um for the Patreon. Like, I, I didn't even plug the new T shirts that are online now. the The link is in the the show notes at um below the collar doc. I didn't even mention those. I like I I, I didn't even talk about how. I am wearing the the new Yodi Hawk T-shirt, and it, it, it looks great. You got the little front breast print, exactly like the old Tony Hawk Pal Peralta tee, and then you got the big print on the back. I didn't, I didn't even bring that up, but um, you know, you can mark that off. Uh, zero days since technical technical difficulties. I don't. I feel like today has been. Have we had a technical difficulty today? Hmm. I feel like we've done well. I feel like we've done well. Uh, there's a free space with a picture of Toro. Love that. Um, Ewoks Return of the Jedi mention. I don't think we've had that today. Plays clip of Corey. All right, mark that one off. Uh, super chat from viewer. Where you at? Haven't had that. Come on. Um, Araj in chat. No Araj. Uh, Catherine Neen in chat. No Catherine Neen. Mentions Toro. Um, I think I've mentioned that I didn't mention him. King Tom in the chat. He's rarely in the chat. Baby Yoda on screen. Well, he's there. Um, he's not. The little banner thing hasn't come up. Corey misses Corey Thursday. He's been pretty good. He, he promised me this week. Algorithm. Oh, we haven't even talked about the algorithm. Oh, my stars. Respect the algorithm, you guys. I should go through this bingo thing every each day. It's, it's very helpful. Um Click everything. Click like. Uh, if you're watching afterwards, write a little comment. I always get back to all the comments left on YouTube, and it also helps us. The interaction helps the algorithm. Why don't? It's not about me. Help the algorithm. Help the algorithm. It's like it's the algorithms, like the wills or the midi chlorians of of YouTube. It would say. Um, Sean Hoffman points out something, you know, I, I feel like this is, um, common sense, but it doesn't always make its way through on the internet. I don't think people are blaming Yoju. It's natural for him. I think people have an issue with the writers putting him in that scenario on screen. Agreed. Um... Someone said they're watching BLT1019 says, I'm on Twitter. I always put the YouTube link in the, the little Twitter post. So you can click on that and um, come join everyone else in the chat. Where are we at? Corey algorithm. Corey head on screen. Didn't have that today. Hyper chat goes for 60 minutes plus. We're at 49. We're almost about to hit 50 minutes. But... Um, I don't think we'll be going for 60 minutes today 
because I feel like this show has gone on long, long enough. So uh, we will wrap it up. If you're wondering, this podcast this episode, we put every third Hyperchat episode up on the free feed. So this one is Patreon exclusive. Thank you, our Patreons, on uh, just $3 a month or higher. And again, we've got those special offers. Make it five first month, stick a pack, or you can make it 10 in first month. You get one of the classic tees from merchostore.com and a sticker pack. So um, if that sounds good, there's Your Snoke Theory Sucks. There's Chicago Sports Reference T-shirt. Um, I'm Ray's Parents. Uh, there's a few Wear Home T-shirts left. The Have You Seen Him? So um, check it out if you want to help us out. And Lydra says, and I agree, um, oh, except for not this bit. Thank you so much for a great episode, Steel. I really look forward to these. I look forward to them too as well, Lydra. And um, having everyone join us in the chat is kind of what makes it uh, like super fun. It would be, I, I, I used to, like people, different people have different ways that works for them. And when I try to record stuff, like in a, a vacuum, not going live, I just, oh, it didn't work for me. Um, doing this new sort of stuff. Um, you know, it works for an interview. But, um, yeah, doing it live with everyone joining in is, um, that suits me. <laughs> it, it makes it so much more fun. So thanks, everyone. Uh, make sure you uh, help out that little algorithm. It's not about me. It's about the algorithm. Help him out. And um, thanks so much. We'll see you tomorrow, Wednesday. I've, who knows? This is a fun thing. Who knows what Star Wars news will be um Wednesday morning. Do you know what I mean? Yesterday, I didn't have any idea that Darth Maul was in episode eight. It's fantastic. It's good fun. Hope you enjoyed it. And may that force be with you. Mm -hmm.